this video, we are going to discuss the simple and powerful opening for black that you can use to neutralize your position and can win many games with it. And that is the Karo Khan defense. So here we begin. White begins the game with e4 and then we reply c6. This is the structure of Karo Khan defense. So in this position, we can see that we allow the opponent to create the control over the center by playing d4. We play d5 attacking the center. Now we can see that this pawn is under attack. So this pawn can be protected by pushing it forward or by playing knight to c3 or by easily taking the pawn. Here white begins with exchange variation where white takes the pawn. We also take it back. Knight to f3, knight to c6, knight to c3. Now we can see that bishop at c8 can be further developed by playing bishop to g4, which is pinning the knight. Here comes bishop to e2, then comes e6. Now here we are developing another bishop. Now white replies with castling, protecting the king. We begin with knight to f6, then comes x3. Now in this phase, it, first of all, we can make sure that it is attacking the bishop. Now we can look on this pawn. This pawn is currently under attack by the knight. And if we play queen to b6, then also it will be in under attack. But the problem is that the queen and the knight, both of them are protecting this pawn. So it is a better idea to take the knight and to decrease the number of attackers. Here comes bishop cross f3. Now we can play queen to b6 where we can easily attack the pawn. Anyways, in this position we can see that we must develop the bishop for the king's safety. Here we are going to play bishop to d6 creating the open diagonal attacking along the king's side. Bishop to g5 winning the knight. Now as we all talked about castling so we castle after castling we can see that white plays rook to e1 now we have to do something about this bishop because this bishop pins the knight so we play x6 bishop goes back then don't worry play g5 and push it back and at last bishop comes to g3 where we exchange the bishop now we play queen to b6 as I told you, here we are going to attack both of the pawns and at last you are going to win because you are going to have extra pawns with you. Now in this variation, we decided to take the pawn. Now since we decided to play knight to f3 in this position, but what if white begins with c4, also called the pan of attack. Now since if we are going to take it, then it is not a right idea. Because we are allowing white to develop the bishop. How? Let us say it takes then bishop comes over here. And now we are giving it a diagonal attacking along the weakest square. That is the f7 square. White can develop the queen. And that can be one of the early queen attack as well. So it is not a right variation to take it. Instead we can develop the knight by playing knight to f6. That is protecting the pawn. White decides to play knight to c3. We develop another knight. Now, if white decides to take it, then we have the knight to take this pawn. So, simply we can take it. Now, if white decides to take, then we can take it from the queen. That is the basic rule. Anyways, white develops the knight, knight to f3. Then comes bishop to g4, winning the knight. Now, since we have developed almost all the pieces on the queen side what about the king side so we must develop this bishop by either pushing e6 or by g6 anyways white decides to play bishop to e2 then we decide to play e6 since we have a very important square bishop to b4 that is pinning the knight we have two attackers as well so in this cases white decides to castle then comes bishop to e7, 
now knight cross d5 now since if we take from the pawn 10 our position gets isolated so it is not a right idea to take it from the pawn instead take it from the queen then comes bishop to e3 protecting the pawn now here we begin with castling now simply you can play the rook to c8 or rook to d8 attacking along the queen side and you can easily win the game if you follow the basic principles of chess we all discussed about exchange variation but what if i decide to push the pawn here we enter into advanced variation now many of the players are going to think that we are not going to develop this knight because if we are going to play knight to f6 then white can easily take that knight so in such cases don't worry you can play c5 attacking the center now if white decides to take the pawn then it is a very easy position since we have two weak pawns on either side anyways now if you are, are going to play e6 for attacking this then don't be in a hurry to play this since we have this bishop we can easily develop the bishop first then we can play and attack the c5 pawn anyways knight to c6 attacking the pawn at e5 knight to f3 protecting the pawn now comes bishop to g4 winning the knight we can also take the pawn at e5 and attack along the knight bishop comes to e2 then we are going to play e6 since we have already developed this bishop now we are attacking the pawn at c5 which is a better idea white decides to play bishop to e3 which is now protecting the pawn anyways in this position what about this knight so we can play knight g to e7 no matter we are blocking this bishop because we can play knight over f5 or g6 here white decides to play x3 attacking the bishop black decides to take the knight now if i take it back you are going to take the pawn at e5 now since this is also a weak pawn you can play knight to f5 in the next move and attack this bishop and can create the attack over the c5 pawn you can play rook to c8 castle which is a very nice variation that you can play now here we are going to look for the second part in the advanced variation where we decide to play c5 attacking the center if white is going to take it then you know what to do so here white decides to play c3 then we play knight to c6 developing another knight knight to f3 then we are going to exchange our pawns bishop to g4 winning the knight now if white decides to play x3 attacking the bishop don't worry take the uh, knight and if white takes it then we win the pawn so in such variation you are going to look bishop to e2 now what to do here we can play e6 developing another bishop at b4 white decides to castle then we develop another knight here knight comes to c3 now we play knight to f5 we have double attackers on the pawn since we have double attackers on the pawn but white also have this knight and the queen to protect this pawn so it is generally a good idea to take this knight in the next move and take that pawn so in such variation you are going to look for bishop to e3 protecting the pawn now don't be in a hurry to exchange this knight for the bishop since it is not good to exchange your pieces for invalid reasons anyways we play bishop to e7 developing another bishop white decides to play rook to c1 now we can easily castle on the king side here we can play queen to b6 and then we can also take the knight and can create the attack on the center we can also play rook to c8 and if you are an aggressive player then you can play f6 white decides to take then we can take from the bishop and can create a triple attack towards the center now here we are going to look for the classical variation where white decides to play e4 
we pick it with c6 d4 d5 knight to c3 now here black decides to take the pawn knight takes the pawn knight comes to f6 attacking the knight so knight decides to take the knight and e cross f6 now this time this is the tata cover variation don't worry since we have this double pawns because we are going to use all our pieces to attack the king's side especially when king castles anyways knight comes to f3 bishop to d6 bishop to d3 then finally we castle white also castle now we play rook to e1 since we have a clear row white decides to play x3 blocking the way of bishop so bishop comes to e6 then comes c3 now main motive is that queen comes to c2 and attack the pawn at x7 so it is generally a good idea to play knight to d7 because we can easily play knight to f8 in the next move if white decides to play queen to c2 knight to f8 comes and now we are going to begin with bishop to d2 queen to d7 rook f to e1 and now we are going to play brilliant bishop sacrifice where we are sacrificing the bishop white takes the bishop queen takes the pawn attacking the knight bishop comes to e4 protecting the knight then comes f5 knight comes to g5 attacking the queen so it's generally a good idea to give a check by giving queen to x2 give a check king comes to f1 and white loses the bishop the game is not over yet. Knight takes the pawn. Queen comes to x1 giving the check. And at last white loses the knight as well. So in all these ways you can see that black is having a massive 4 points advantage. As it has taken 2 minor pieces of white. And so here we are going to look for the fantasy variation. Where white plays e4. We play c6, d4, d5. And this time f3. This is called the fantasy variation. Now it's generally not a good idea to take the pawn. If we are going to take it then white can take it back and can create a control over the center. It is also not a good idea to play knight to f6 because white can push the pawn and can attack the knight. So here we can play e5 creating the control over the center. And if white decides to take it, then bishop comes to c5 attacking along the dangerous diagonal, attacking the f2 square, e cross d5, then comes queen to b6. This time it is attacking the knight. So white decides to protect the knight, and this time white loses the game. If white decides to play c3, which is a random move then we are going to exchange our pawns and at last we are going to play queen to x4 giving a check g3 and finally comes the check attacking the rook